Did you know you only need seven different processes in PixInsight to process an image? Hello, I'm Daniel Zulero, and I want to help you take your astrophotography to the next level. So today, I'm going to be showing you seven processes in PixInsight that I think are the most basic, the most essential ones that you need to get going with PixInsight. So I've got my image, my raw image of the Helix Nebula open. That's what we're going to be using to, to show you these seven essential processes. And the first thing we're going to look at is the screen transfer function. Function. <clears throat> function. <laughs> when you open this up, all you got to do is click this little nuclear button, the auto stretch button. And there you go. I've got a stretched image. Now, if you happen to find that when you click that, your image looks all green like this, um, with a one-shot color camera, that just means that you've got this uh, link RGB channels button selected and you just need to unselect that, then hit auto stretch and it should look just like that. All right, the second thing that we need to do is to, to crop our image. So let's go to processes over here and dynamic crop. And so um, the reason why we want to crop it is because after stacking, you're going to get edge artifacts on the edge of our photo that we don't need and that we don't want to process. So we're going to click the reset button, which selects our image. And all we do is just drag in on the edges here to get rid of those stacking artifacts. Then hit the green execute button. Now we've got a cropped image. Um, I click down here to zoom to fit, which we will maximize it again. Next up, we're going to do dynamic background extraction. DBE, as it's often called, is probably the most difficult of these processes to learn and can take some experimentation. So this image here is, is going to be pretty simple to use with it. But after opening it, you want to click on your image and it will give you, based on the size of your image, a default sample radius that usually works pretty good. All right. So now we want to select samples to sample this image. Now, it's important when selecting the samples on your image that you, you don't pick stars, you don't put your samples over stars, and that you don't put your samples on any of the nebulosity in the photo because we want to sample the background, not the stars and not the nebula. So I usually like to keep it really simple. You don't want to go too crazy with placing sample points. I usually put one in each corner of the image. And then usually about somewhere around halfway up in each of these squares, I'll add another sample point. Now you see this nebula here, I wanna be careful not to select that. So I'm gonna put it just before it. Now we need to change the tolerance. Um, it's uh, not sampling very many pixels. We wanna allow it to sample more. Since I know that I haven't selected stars or nebula, we can be a little bit more tolerant. So I usually like to go with at least three uh, that's probably a good place to start. On smoothing factor, I usually like to put this around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, um, because it's uh, smooths the transition of um, how it fixes the background of your image. Under correction, I like to use division. Division works well for optical vignetting, while subtraction is supposed to work better for light pollution. I really haven't found a whole lot of difference between the two. For now, we're gonna select normalize. Go ahead and click discard background model for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit apply. Hit execute. We're gonna get two images. One of them is a new window of the corrected image that we can look at. And the other one is showing us the, the background. So let's go ahead and open up our screen transfer and select that again. So you can see this gives an overall look of how it's correcting our image, which looks pretty accurate. It looks like the vignetting in our image. We can close that out. And let's take a look at the sample image here and see if it looks good. Click our stretch button. Okay. Yep. Overall, it looks pretty balanced. So um, and this looks noisy, um, but we're not going to use this. Um, we're going to go ahead and close that out. Since I, since I like the way that looks, what we're going to do is go back to the um, options here. We don't need another uh, background model. And what we're going to do is instead of opening a new window, we're going to apply it by replacing the target image, uh, applying it directly to our image. Hit the execute button. Okay, and then I'm gonna close dynamic background extraction. And I can show you the before and after. So here's before, you can see all the vignetting and here's after. 
you can tell things look a lot more even now. All right, after DBE, now we need to do um, the next process, which is background neutralization. So in order to use this, what we need to do is create a preview. We want to find somewhere in the image that has no nebula, that has no stars. This looks like a good spot here. Make a little preview square. Now we want to select that as our reference image. So click there under view selected, click preview one. And then all we do is we just drag this to our image and as you can tell, it's changed some things, which can easily be fixed if we go back over to screen transfer and click that auto stretch again. And now we're going to do the color calibration. Color calibration is going to help balance the colors in our image. Now on this one, we're, for the background reference, we're gonna want to go ahead and select the same preview area. And just like before, we just click or drag that onto there, see? There you go. So you can tell that it's done quite a bit to balance those things out. This has not been permanently stretched. This is still, still technically what we call um, a linear image. So what we're gonna do is use the histogram transformation. Let's go ahead and reset our screen transfer function here. So we get this black and white image, go back over to our histogram transformation. Now down here, you're gonna wanna click track view. So it tracks our photo. And then right here, there's a little preview button. Open that up. So what we're gonna do is drag this midpoint slider and we're gonna apply it a few times. Just drag it in just a little bit here. You can see our stars got brighter. So let's go ahead and drag this to our window and apply it. And every time it'll stay like that unless you reset it. So we could go ahead and try that again. And it's slowly stretching that image. When I apply another one, it will look that way. All right, now on our preview, that looks a little overstretched. So what we can do is click the reset button. So now it matches our real image. And on the preview, let's go ahead and bring this in just a little more. And now we can pull this black point. Now you wanna be careful um, over here under shadows you want to be careful not to clip too many pixels. So bring that in. And we could probably brighten it up just a tad. See, now that's something to pay attention to. Um, we're getting a lot of noise. The more you stretch it, the more noise you're going to bring out. So let's actually back off just a little bit here. And I'd say that looks pretty good to me. All right, so let's apply this final stretch to the image and close that out. All right, and one last thing, with astrophotography, a lot of times, especially with one-shot color cameras, because of that extra green in the, in the pixel array, you're going to get a lot more green than you really need. So SCNR is a process that removes the green from photos. So you just open it up and you drag this on there. All right, so it's subtle, but if you look, this has in the helix nebula has more of a blue hue now if i go backwards and undo it it looks more of a turquoisey color but after applying scnr it looks to me it looks better it has less of that green in there it looks more natural now if you're a beginner and you're a little worried that pixinsight might be too difficult for you watch this video right here and until next time clear skies